Sally Steele and welcome to my show. I have a very special show for you today, an interview with the legendary Pat Travers. The Steele Rock Show and we were here today with one of the most incredible legendary musicians of our time. He's influenced so many guitarists and musicians in his career. Ladies and gentlemen, he's here tonight in Las Vegas playing the live Copa Room Sessions. Please welcome the legendary guitarist and singer-performer, guitarist extraordinaire, Pat Travers. Hey, Shelly. It's so awesome to meet you and get to talk to you here. This is great. Sally, not Shelly. Sorry, I'm... S <laughs> oh, man, that's a faux pas. I <laughs> can't believe I did that because I don't. I'm very good with names Sorry. and... Uh, that one just now you know we, we actually met very briefly do you remember in 2006 you probably don't it was a private party at the small joint uh don dock and steven adler were there and i took a quick picture oh, with you oh yeah i think so yeah 2006 right yeah. okay yeah i remember that yeah. i just took a quick picture and said hello okay. you were so nice yeah well i have a little trouble remembering that particular specific <laughs> selfie but Okay, no, that's okay. It wasn't a selfie back then. It was somebody had to take the oh, picture. Okay, back then, <laughs> 2006. <laughs> the old days. Now, um, you've been a long, around a long time. You've had a remarkable career. Uh, I want to get started now. You're from Canada, correct? Originally, yeah. I was born in uh, Toronto, Canada, mm -hmm. in 1954. It's my birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday. Thank you. And... Uh, uh, started playing music. I got my first guitar when I was about 12, but I, after having seen the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show when I was nine years old, a few years prior, I uh, went, wow, that's something I think I'd like to do. And uh, so I got my first guitar when I was 12 and basically never put it down. So. And you just, uh, you went to England, right? You just, how did that work? You just, I'm going to go to Europe and be a star, and you just picked up your guitar and went over there alone? Yeah, that's basically how I did it. <laughs> I couldn't think of any other way. By that point, I had, speaking of birthdays, I had just turned 21, and I had been playing uh, professionally since I was 15. So, you know, I had over five years of experience at that age. And uh, so I was ready for some kind of a major change. And I thought London, England would be the place for me to go. Um, my mom was English and my dad was Irish. So I, I have uh, uh, affiliation to, you know, British people. So it, it wasn't completely nuts for me to go there. Okay, well, that's cool. Now, you've had a, a lot of uh, interesting things in your career. Now, I heard that Alex Lifeson from Rush is a big fan of yours. You've toured, you've opened up for Rush. Now, did you guys know each other w from growing up in Canada? No. Uh, weird thing, though. Um, yeah, we did, I did my first major American tour in the winter, <laughs> of course, the winter of 1978 opening for Rush all across the country in all the sheds and they weren't mega stars at that point but the, every album they put out went gold and uh, they sold out the arenas and the sheds so they were super successful they just didn't have any radio play or anything which changed dramatically a couple of years later mm -hmm. but um, uh, no, I didn't know them uh, prior to that tour, but we got to know them, and they're great guys. It's a weird story. Uh, when I was back living in Toronto in 1974, and I went, uh, I had a date with a friend of mine to see a musical uh, in the afternoon on a Saturday in downtown Toronto off of Young Street. <laughs> so uh, after the show, it was, you know, about 4.30 in the afternoon, so we went out, and there was a bar across the street, and it was empty, other than us two, and the bartender, and the doorman, and the waiter, and uh, so we're having a beer, and then all of a sudden, the band comes on. It's Rush. 
Let's have a beer at the bar. I mean, I felt so because, you know, having been in that situation, a Saturday afternoon matinee, which you have to play, even though there's nobody there. I mean, that happens all the time. So I, I didn't even make eye contact with them. I, I knew they felt terrible. So, But they played their whole set like f full balls to the wall. You know, it was great. Awesome, awesome. Now, your song, Boom Boom Out Go the Lights, I know you've talked a lot about it. Now, I couldn't figure Now, tell me this, because I, I don't know this. Was that only recorded as a live version, or did you do that as a on your record no it, uh, it was a track that we did a studio version on my very first excuse me album um, and uh, I had it was more boogie woogie that piano and uh, mm -hmm. it was more traditional more like the original version that I had heard um, it's an old song it was probably 1949 1950 guy named Little Walter, who was a harp player, did it first. Uh, so when we were doing my first album, and I had only just started to write songs, so uh, I didn't have uh, a strong tune, and we were short one, and I remembered that song. So we did a version of it on the first album, and then as we started playing live, it kind of morphed into you know what it became yeah that's what i was wondering it yeah. became a hit again after the yeah. live version right yeah well exactly for the first time actually because uh, nobody really heard the first version i mean we we didn't sell them my first album was available as an import in the u.s because i had a english or a british deal mm -hmm. and uh Polidor. Uh, yeah uh then ultimately we signed to worldwide with them uh, in 1978 so is it true that song is about spousal abuse um if you think ralph cramden on the honeymooners when he goes one of these days alice bam zoom to the moon it's that same kind of thing it was never except jackie gleason isn't singing it <laughs> no well, that's true, but I always just thought it was uh, a, a term of exasperation. Okay. You know, I love the song. You did yeah, a great well, job it's on just it. Just a dumb little blues tune, you know. It's catchy though, and it's got for a blues tune, it's got one thing very sophisticated musically is a bar of five in the verse. It's the weirdest thing. It's boom no kid and boom i'm ready to fight five one two goes one two three four five boom boom which is like the weirdest thing it's a great job would have a a moment like that okay which leads me to my next question uh snorting whiskey drinking cocaine was that written from your personal experience uh not mine but my other guitar player at the time pat thrall I know Pat. Yeah, he lives here in Vegas. Mm. Mm -hmm. We were rehearsing at a rehearsal studio in North Miami and uh, for the Crash and Burn album. And uh, we rehearsed around 2 o'clock uh, every day, but wasn't hard and fast. People could slowly show up. And uh, so 3 o'clock came and went, no Pat Thrall. 4 o'clock, still no Pat. By 5, you know, I started getting mad. Like, I'm either pissed or I'm worried about him, you know, or a little of both. So around 5, the big studio door gets kicked open, and here he comes. He's got his arm around his girlfriend who's got one of her boobs hanging out. And, you know, they're just kind of floated into the room and I said PT what have you been doing and he said snorting whiskey and drinking cocaine and I went oh man that sounds like a song and uh, I had basically that whole tune musically and then once I had that title hook uh, it took me six minutes to write the rest of it you know did you just start writing it right then after he said that yeah 
Oh, thank you, Pat Thrall. Yeah, well, right. I gave him half the freaking writers publishing on that, you know, just for that, which he doesn't even really remember. <laughs> he he claims he thought he said it the right way, and it just came out wrong. Doesn't matter. Now, was that when Tommy Aldridge was in the band, right? Yeah, Tommy Aldridge on drums and Mars Cowling on bass, yeah. Now, I, my, my dear friend, Mike Varney, who signed you with his label, he's done many records, he's told me that so many of your fans are waiting for that classic lineup with Pat and Tommy it, it, for a reunion. Is that ever going to happen? I doubt it. it. You know, if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. There were a number of attempts, but, uh, you know, Tommy was either playing with Ozzy or Whitesnake and Pat at that by that time had become basically a studio mm. guy mm -hmm. and uh, it was hard to get him out of there mm -hmm. and uh, so it needed some driving force other than myself to kind of spur it along and that never happened so okay yeah. well uh and you play with carmine a piece you yeah. play with so many um nico mcbrain oh, from yeah. iron maiden yeah I've, I've had some pretty hot drummers yeah now do you still keep in touch with all the guys yeah i talk to carmine every other week he he's uh, a doll oh he's the best he's my big brother and he moved to florida now so he's not that far away and uh, Nico, same thing. He he moved over to Melbourne, which is where my drummer and bass player live. So um, I haven't been to his new place yet, but he was down in Fort Lauderdale. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Y you know, you've had such a, a long, amazing career with ups and downs, as many of us for so many years and have had. Now, was there any point in your career where you just said, you know, my career is over? I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> Yesterday, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard sometimes to, you know, keep your confidence up. And and because uh, I've learned through the years that sometimes the things that are most successful are, are stuff you didn't work that hard on. It just kind of happened organically. Mm -hmm. There's then stuff you really put a lot of effort into uh, doesn't seem to get noticed so mm -hmm. you know that can be a little disheartening uh, our last album the art of time travel I, I mean i spent a year on that and uh i think it's some of the best material i've ever written and it sounds great and people like it but there's no place for it to be played other than uh, p some few people might have a vinyl album and other people might stream it or whatever mm -hmm. uh, are you still with cleopatra records yes well yeah one album at a time i don't have a, an ongoing deal with them you know i want to give a shout out to brian Pereira. Uh, he's awesome he's a real a real record guy you know yeah. he's a yeah not many guys like him yeah he um did research i i mean i was a singer in bands for 30 years he signed me last year to his record label with my 80s material <laughs> he dug around and he goes he goes is this this is you right yeah. this is like a lost treasure and yeah he's just a doll yeah. i love brian no it's so cool that he will do things like that and yeah. uh as a matter of fact, not too long ago, Todd Rundgren's manager, Eric, approached Brian and said, we would like to be on your label, which I thought was, Did he Brian must have thought that was pretty cool, too. Did it happen? Yeah. Oh, good, good, yeah. And, and I guess they recently signed Angel, too, another oh, yeah, good another, friend of mine. Yeah, we used to, I think I did a n number of shows with them in the late 70s, early 80s. Mm -hmm. Now, if you could have had a different career in your life, what would it have been? <laughs> Probably something scientific or, yeah. Rocket science? I mean, what? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, definitely. Were you good in chemistry or something or science yeah. as a kid? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, very much so. Got an A in biology, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
aced it. Yeah, I was good at math, good at all that stuff. I, I still read a lot of books on stuff, astrophysics, which, of course, without the right math you can never truly understand, but I try I read a lot of books. You read books on astrophysics? Yeah. I would get, like, the first three words. This is, uh, yeah. I'm like, well, what? <laughs> she, you know, it's difficult to think of. Uh, so you have to practice because there's a lot of the stuff involved, like at a subatomic level. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even know no what's sub- what sub. What is subatomic? I don't even know what that is. There's no way to even imagine what is going on at that level. It just means. The, there's atoms make up molecules, right? Like air or water is a molecule, two atoms. And then atoms, what are they made of? Well, they're made of electrons, protons, and neutrons. But what are those made of? So it gets okay. split again. And uh, that's down at that level. It's, it's uh, very difficult to try to figure out what's going on. Thanks for the science lesson. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I I failed biology because I didn't want to hurt the frog. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, I wasn't thrilled about dissecting frogs. No, I had we somebody had cats there. too. No way! Yeah. Oh my oh, God! Man. You could not do that these days. The, the PETA would be, uh, you know, up yours, you know, in yeah. a second in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Or or I would. I would come in and save the cats. Well, I mean, yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Right. We are so happy you are here. I guess you're kicking off the uh, yeah, live sessions at Copa. I have uh, an ongoing uh, thing here, so this will be the first one. I'm pleased to be here. Well, I'm so looking forward to seeing you tonight. All I've right. never seen you live. I'm excited. Oh. Well, cool. It's not with my band, but they're great players, so it should be good. Okay. All right. Uh, here, here at uh, Ron Mancusa studio, uh, I had one more question. Uh, tell me something that you've never told an interviewer before. <laughs> oh, gosh, I can't think of anything. You have beautiful eyes. Well, that's a uh, thank you, but that's I'm asking what you have never told an interviewer that's, before. I've never told an interview. Oh, you're sweet. I love you, Pat. Okay, here right. with Pat Travers. Tonight's going to rock the Copa Room. We are so excited. Check them out, Pat Travers. PatTravers.com. There you go. See you next time, Sally yeah. Steele Rock Show. <laughs> But my love, baby, is not the kind of fool Come on, sure, let the good times roll
I need you all to dance with me back with I'll do it right. Hold on one second. Oh. Just, I want to make sure this is yeah. doing really good too. Okay. Hey, thank you. Special delivery. Uh, I sure appreciate <laughs> thank it. You. It's getting hot. Hey, where's my beer? No, I, I don't. I don't drink. It's it's good. Well, it's good. Well, I don't either. But I'm having a beer. Uh, it's okay. You can have a beer. The drinking whiskey's starting early. <laughs> no, no, no whiskey, dear. Let me Not just look for at many, me. many years. <laughs>